Hi, I'm Todd Klippinger, and welcome to the American Craftsman Workshop. This video is part of a larger series where we are discussing and exploring the business of woodworking and how to sell your projects. And I kicked off this series in episode 34 by sharing my own experience. But my experience is rooted in the remodeling industry, and this is where my opportunities have come from. Now, I don't expect you guys to get into remodeling to try to start selling your projects. And I realized we needed some other perspectives, so I decided to go get some interviews with other woodworkers. Well, very fortunate that Summer Fair was in town, which is a juried arts and crafts show held annually in Billings. And woodworkers are always involved. Because it's a juried show, the quality of the woodworking tends to be pretty high. And so I thought it would be a great opportunity to meet some great woodworkers. One of the guys that I met at the show that I had not previously known was Scott Enlow, a woodwright from Great Falls, Montana. Now, you can check out his work at scottsboatworks.com. Now, when you go over there, be sure to drop him a line of thanks because Scott was very generous with his information and his time and sharing with us. And I, like I said, I had not known Scott until I just simply approached him at the show and asked for an interview. Well, I don't want to hold you up any longer. Let's get to... Let's get to Scott's interview and see what he has to share about the business of woodworking. Uh, my name is Scott Enlow. I'm a woodworker, woodwright in Great Falls, Montana. Uh, I've been full-time uh, woodwright about 13 years, uh, part-time a long time before that. Uh, I specialize in cedar strip wood canoes, and uh, I guess my main specialty also is uh, rocking chairs, and then uh, on top of that, any other type of wood item that anybody requests or would like built. Uh, I have a 1,400 square foot shop that started as a two car garage at my home. Uh, within that shop I have a dedicated finish room, some commercial, some non-commercial tools. Uh, I'm very uh, comfortable in the 1,400 square foot shop because I am a one butt studio, uh, my wife and I always call, we're one butt studios, uh, meaning I have no employees. Uh, I am sole everything, I sweep the floors to uh, do the website. That's pretty um, it, so it's literally a one butt shop, do all of our uh, advertising, uh, all of our printing work, everything else, computer work. Uh, within the shop, uh, the dedicated finish room is almost a must, or having a dedicated finish process, uh, so that you can keep a certain consistency within your shop, within your product. A consistency involving, I have a finish that is a hand rub finish that is not quite as resistant to wine, um, Coke, coffee, uh, I have another finish uh, of uh, spray conversion varnish for people who request something that's extremely resilient. Um, and, and that's real common anymore if you're building tables for a winery or coffee shops or just somebody's home, a dining room table. Those are uh, two big finishes you need to have. Um, as far as an overall business practice, my recommendation is uh, you know, you can operate overhead, but operate the most minimal overhead that you can have. Um, sometimes I have to wait for a certain job to purchase a tool that I'll need for that job. Uh, I'll work the cost of that tool within not just that job, hoping, geez, this is the glory hole, but I may have to work it in within several jobs, or it'll change my product at that time. Um, for specific shows like this, I've always wanted to do a stool, but I need a certain drill press to be able to drill the angles, or a certain depth gauge, or a larger tool um, to be able to do that product. Sometimes I have to wait for a special order. I need to buy that tool for the special order. That will change my whole product line, um, as opposed to running out, creating a huge overhead, um, a $10,000 tool, or $25,000 of tools right off the bat. Um, now I have a huge overhead. I have to cover that overhead before I can even pay myself or buy wood. Um, so as far as operating a small one butt business, my best advice is low overhead, as low as you can possibly be, definitely. For quality control in my one butt studio, that's an easy one. Um, I have to watch myself, I have to test each product. Um, and, and just try to keep that quality control and material control up to the level it needs to be for a, a craftsman type item that you're trying to do. Uh, meaning I avoid $60 plywoods. 
Uh, most of my plywoods run 90 to 130, 150 dollars a sheet. Uh, you know, you, you just have to bump up to that other level. Uh, pieces of wood, um, going to the box stores to get wood just isn't something that I'm interested in. I go to a, a dealer that can pull down full units for me to where I can find a sapwood, I can find something unique. Uh, another business practice I really like is that if you're going to do this, some of my hardest selling products are products that look like somebody else's. Um, I do make a, a mission rocking chair and I love doing mission, mission work. Um, the work is beautiful, it's fun to do, uh, I've even fumed pieces, but they look just like the stick leaves. Um, they look like everybody else's. Why? It, it took me a lot of years to realize that a lot of the products I'm selling are products that I've designed, I've made, or if I, I have a unique, uh, a unique touch on it. It may, it may just be a, a cedar chest, but there's a unique touch to it. I'm combining woods, I have a different style, uh, it doesn't look like anybody else's. Uh, it takes quite a while to develop your own voice within a business like this, and that's, that's really important, really important. A big piece of advice, you know, always always get the great tools and you know all that stuff, learn your trade, get the great tools, do your best, present your product the best you can. If you're in a, if, if you're in an art booth or no matter where you're at, make it look great. People walk by, you want that booth to snap, you want your chairs to snap, you want your entire product to look fantastic. And, and that's something that gets me excited when I walk around art shows and I see the love and the care that people have put in their booths. That's great advice, but the big, I, I think the one thing I really like is, uh, you know, the art is not only in the craftsmanship, but you really have to put the art into staying in business. The art is trying to make a living and staying in business. And we got to keep it going. Well, thank you very much. Hey, thanks, man. <laughs> no, that was, that was fun. Well, I hope you enjoyed that interview with Scott Enlow from Great Falls, Montana. You can check out his website at scottsboatworks.com. Take a look at all the work at his gallery. He does some really nice uh, work. He's, a, he's definitely a fine craftsman. And drop him a line of thanks for spending the time and giving us all this great information. Scott's Perspective is a great addition to the series of videos that we have on the business of woodworking and how to sell your projects. Be sure to catch all the other videos. I'm going to try to have, make sure everything's always hot linked together. And you don't have to watch these in any special order, guys. They're interviews. Also, if you like what you're watching, be sure to subscribe to my videos. It really energizes me to know that people are watching and subscribing and helps motivate me to get more videos out. Of course, I do have a business that I'm running, so it, I can't always put those out as regularly as I'd like, but it definitely is motivating when I get great feedback. You know, I'm living off of a thanks, guys. <laughs> that's, that's really it. So that's why it's also important to, to show these guys thanks when you watch their videos hit their contact page and give them a thanks too. It's, it's really very fulfilling to know that we're helping other people. Well, until next time, guys, be safe in your own shop. Hi, I'm Todd Clippinger, and welcome to the AmericanCraftsmanWorkshop.com. That's not right.